We have come to the end, my friend. This is the third and final video tutorial in this project. And I think that the results turned out very, very good indeed. All right, so I just happened to have GIMP loaded. And I just happened to have all three images loaded up. So, links to the AT&T Lily, the original image that I downloaded and used for this project, as well as the office background that we're going to be using to do this composite. There's a link to both of those in the show notes if you guys want to download them and use them for this tutorial. So right now we're looking at the original image, the image that we worked on in the last episode, and then we have the office background I chose to download and composite Lily in. So and it's a huge file. I scaled the other images down to 800 by 765. So we need to scale and crop our office background image before we composite her in. So it's huge. It's 5184 by 3456, uh, 3456. 800 by 765 is where we want to get it. So let's go to our handy dandy aspect ratio calculator and 800 wide by 765 high comes out to an aspect ratio of 160 by 153. What was I thinking? I don't know. All right, so let's go back into the game. And let's select our crop tool up here. And I have it set for a fixed aspect ratio of 160 by 153. Okay, so let's crop our image first, get what we want. I'm gonna move this over just a little bit. That looks good. Maximize it up here on the top. I want to cut out the edge of the of the desk back there. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and crop that. And now we need to scale it. Scale our image. I've got my X and Y resolution set for my monitor resolution, which is 100. And so 800 and 765. I love that aspect ratio calculator and tool. So we will scale that. And then let's maximize our image. All right, so let's go over and grab Lily. And we're going to go to edit and copy. And you could also hit control C over here uh, to copy it. And then we're going to go to our office background. And we're going to go to, we're going to right click, we're going to say edit, paste as, and I want to paste it as a new layer in case something happens or we need to move it or something. Ooh, there we go. All right, so Lily is now cut out of her original photo and composited on top of our new photo. So let's take a look at this before, after, before, after, before, after. Okay, that's enough of that. What do you guys think? Does that look good or does that look good? Now, I took the liberty of going ahead and exporting this image and and creating an image in, in GIMP that was twice the size, twice the width, plus the height of the two images. So 1600 by 765 so that I could put the two side by side. So let's go over here and see if I have my image up. Ta-da! All right, so what do you guys think? I think, I think that our composited image actually looks better than the original image. You know, they really blurred that background, I think, too much in the original image. Of course, it came out of a video, so everything was focused on her. So everything in the background was way out of focus. It looks like it's about 60 feet away from her. I really think that our composite image actually looks more realistic than this one. 
and I like the background much better. So what do you guys think of our end result here? Does that look good or does that look good? All right, so I've given you um, a series of three videos. I think this is definitely the easiest way to cut out a background out of an image. I think we did everything here with just four tools. We used the free select, we used the eraser tool, we used the clone tool and the heal tool just to touch up and take off the reflections on her hair and give a little bit of a darker outline on her hair over here on this side and, and used it to fix that little place where I messed up with the, with the free select tool. Now I showed you in the, in the original tutorial that when you're making your, when you're making your selections with the free select tool, that if you mess up, you can always, you know, hover over that, um, that little dot that you created and you can move it wherever you want. You can also do that. Um, once you get your complete selection completed, if you need to go back and move anything before you, before you click inside your selection to finalize it, you can still go and you can move any one of those points around. So I just wanted to, uh, I wanted to make you guys aware of that. But I'm really happy with the way this project turned out. So if we can take, if we can take uh, an image like that with that really blurry background back there, and we can we can cut our subject out of that, spend a little bit of time, you know, touching it up a little bit, and then composite it on a completely separate background and, and have the final result look that good. I, I really, really seriously think this is the easiest way to do it. A lot less work than any other method that I've tried, and I think the results come out much, much better. So anyway, I hope you guys go through and complete this tutorial. Like I said, the more times that you use those tools, the better, the faster, the more accurate you'll become with them. All right? So stay tuned. I'll be publishing a lot more tutorials on GIMP and other programs. And uh, remember, you can create freely. And I will see you next time.